Is it okay if I sit back? Are you gonna be mad? Are you gonna be mad if I sit back here? Okay, well, this is, you know, it's not the, it's the best background, but it's not the most comfortable to sit in right now. Okay, it's fine. Over the past few years, I've been growing my YouTube channel and social media following very slowly. And if you would like to show your support, please consider subscribing, following me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, as well as checking out my sponsor links in the description below. This kind of support can help spread the word about my channel and help support me as a creator. Links are in the description. Thanks. Hello everyone, Miss B. Hanley here. And today I want to talk about my college experience. You know, I've done so many of these videos already and looking through them and listening through them again multiple times, it's made me realize that I've had a really privileged experience when it comes to my education. My dad went to college, he got a bachelor's degree, my mother, did not, but she got a vocational degree. Um, so both of my parents did go to school after high school. And both of them very much valued the importance of education and being educated. In fact, all of my family members valued education and not just formal education in school, but education that could be had outside of school um, experiences, cultural experiences, going to see different states, traveling, going to have different experiences and meeting different people. All of those things were really very much valued in my family. And because of that, I think, is why I was able to have such a good experience throughout school and throughout my education because I had this support system of people who were highly invested in my education. So that being said, I did have the opportunity to go to college. And while I am do have student debt, and <laughs> I do have student loans that I need to pay off. Oh, thank you, Echo. Thank you for providing me the rest of the seat. I appreciate that. I mentioned in my high school vlog that I did get accepted to a number of colleges when in my senior year mainly because in the summer between my junior and senior year, my family paid for me to have a private college counselor. This person was wildly expensive. Um, I know because I did see some of the payments that were given to her. She had a really big house and she was a private consultant. <laughs> um, she basically was hired to help students like me write applications and essays in order to get into their dream college. Um, and she was really good at what she did. I got accepted to almost every single college that I applied to. And I applied to about 11 and I got waitlisted for one and I got denied from another. The one that I got denied from was an Ivy League and I was never gonna go there. <laughs> I was never going to go. I wanted to go to Barnard College, which is a college in, in Columbia, in New York. And it's an all women's college. And it was just, it was a, talk about a dream school. Um, super expensive. My family was not willing at all to pay for that kind of education without me going into extreme amounts of debt. And I think that it was ultimately the best thing that I didn't get accepted but it was a dream of mine for a very, very long time growing up to go to school in New York, something that I never got to do. And then the other one that I got waitlisted for was, I think, Blagler or Florida State. But it was it was like, you can come, we'll accept you, and but you are going to be like on a it's on a wait list or you have to come early or something like that. Both of those colleges I was kind of like interested in but neither one of them were really speaking to me. Um, I did want to go, I did have an idea that I would go to a college that was smaller, that had smaller class sizes, that had smaller teacher to student ratio. There was a big push to have me go to school in the state that I grew up in, mainly because of financial aid, because there was a more affordable options for students going to college in the state they grew up in. Looking back, I'm glad that I stayed in the area that I grew up in. 
but at the time I was very much, I want to go away. <laughs> I want to explore the world kind of thing, um, which I ended up doing. Um, I ended up going, getting accepted and going to a college called Florida Southern College, which was very, you know, not very far away from the town I grew up in. The reason why I ended up accepting this this college in particular was because I think I had been there before when I was younger. I was familiar with it. The school seemed to really have this great sense of community. It was small school and it was far enough away from my hometown that I felt like I was away without being in another state or a really far trip away. You know, the Florida Southern campus has won several awards when it comes to the their beauty um, their landscaping and their design, their architectural design. It really is a beautiful campus. Um, it's set on a beautiful lake um, and the community is is very safe and welcoming. My freshman year was very much focused on trying to figure out what major I was going to take. And I, I think I initially started with sociology. There was a lot that I was interested in. I kind of shied away from theater because the like I mentioned in my previous video, the theater program at this school was, I, I don't think it was a step down from my high school program, but it was like a lateral step. It wasn't necessarily like I was going to be, you know, learning more than what I had already learned in high school. So I, I wasn't like as intrigued by their theater program as I had knowledge of in my high school program. So I started with sociology. I switched at one point to communications. I did some photography. I did join the yearbook committee. Um, and there was some fun things that I did in those particular areas of study. Um, I also did art history at one point. I really, really, really loved my art history class. I had a really great professor. I almost got left behind at the in college on a college field trip to the Dolly Museum. But it was a really great trip. I loved going to the Dolly Museum. I learned so much about his art. And I just, it was, it was a really fun major. It felt not so academic because we were kind of just looking at art, which was fun. And the history behind it was so fascinating and so interesting. But, you know, even though I did these majors that were more focused on the arts, even sociology, even communications, there was a lot of pressure to be like, what are you going to do for a job? How is this going to help you make money? And I really, really, really wish that there was less of that. Looking back as a teacher now, I didn't take any education courses when I was in college in my undergrad. I really wish there was not this focus on how are you going to make money because to be quite honest, yes, money is important. And I know that there is a lot of pressure on students today to have a practical job, you know, STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, you know, like making the making money, making a paycheck, and also focusing on these things. But the arts are also incredibly important when it comes to connecting human beings and communicating with each other. And it just felt like a lot of the time when I was in college, the focus was mostly on how are you going to make money? How are you going to make money? Which it, it is because like you are spending money to go to this school to learn these things. I think that the mentality ultimately of that kind of way of thinking is not necessarily, this is, this is my opinion now, but it's just not necessarily helpful to anyone. I think that there are ways that you can be successful and make money and still do something that you love and enjoy and you'll be okay. You know, I feel like there are things you can do to make money and live with an arts degree, you know, but that's me. I'm biased. I did end up trying a theater major at one point. I did take some theater classes. I did have a job in the costume shop, like a work study job where I went to the costume shop and I did costumes for a couple of the shows. I did take theater classes 
And being in the theater program really opened up my eyes to how much theater knowledge I ended up getting in high school. And just like I said, it was a lateral move. You know, a lot of the stuff that they were learning was stuff that I was learning in high school that I had already kind of gotten this information from, from my, from the, my high school program. And the productions that they did were on level with my high school program. They were not a step above. Um, no offense to, to the Florida Southern Theater Program, but I did all of that already. You know, it was, I, I had a really professional program in high school. And so I was, I was entitled. I, I was kind of looking for something a little bit more professional. The productions were great. They had really great production value. I think that the classes were very valuable, but it was, it was not a step above what I was already doing. So I think that was the last time I changed my major before I settled on an English major. And I think at that point, I had done all these other things where I was like, well, I'm going to try all these different things. And I had already, I already loved literature. I already loved reading books. I, I really, really loved reading and books. I'd always done that throughout high school. And so finally, when I was like, well, I'm just going to do an English major, it was like, and you're home now. And the classes were everything that I had ever wanted in an English class, <laughs> everything that I had ever wanted in an English class were the classes that I ended up taking. And I honestly felt the most comfortable. I felt like I was really learning. There was just so much in the English department classes that I just, it just made sense. And I, and again, this goes back to this whole talk of like, what are you going to do for your job? How are you going to make money as an English major? But it didn't really matter to me because it was so valuable to me. And I mean, granted, not everybody's going to feel that way about English literature. You might be watching this and be like, I hate reading. But OK, maybe you really like math. Like maybe you really want to go be a math major. Like it really is to me, it, ultimately, it is about where you feel the most value for your education is. I loved my literature classes. I loved my poetry classes. I loved every single class I took in the English department. It felt like I belonged. It, that's the best I can say. Even, even taking theater classes and going to the theater department and being a part of the theater department, I did not feel like I belonged in the same way that I felt like I belonged in the English department. It, should, it, was, it just made sense for me. So I feel like ultimately, you know, taking classes that you feel like you have to or you're supposed to or this is what's going to get you a job is really not the way to go. Um, I think that ultimately when you're going to college, that's your time. That's your money. And so it's based on what you value. The biggest difference between high school and college was like, you know, high school, they put so much pressure on you, obviously, in your GPA and to get things done. College is a lot is on you. You know, when I was late to class, sure, the professors were mad, but what are they going to do? You know, like, if I didn't go to class, which I did have to take a math class <laughs> that I never went to, that I never went to. Um, I would legitimately skip that math class. Um, I did have to take it as a part of like the requirements for the, the bachelor's degree. I went maybe two times and I didn't pay attention either time. And then I took the final and I passed it with a D and nobody said anything, you know, like my, my mom, my dad never found out about it. It was on me. The professor, maybe he was mad. He didn't care. He didn't call me. He didn't email me. But ultimately, college is your experience. It's not anybody else's. There are a lot of nets for young undergrads, like catch-alls, like you're going to don't fail, right? But most of it is on you. And most of it is on how much time and money you're willing to spend. I would like to make a quick note here about dorm life. Uh, something I didn't mention in my original video was living in the dorms in college. On my first year, I did stay in a single room dorm. I did not have a roommate. It was more expensive. 
although I didn't realize it at the time. I did opt for a roommate in my sophomore, junior, and senior year because I did feel like I was missing out on a crucial piece of college living without having a roommate. Um, But I realized pretty quickly that having a roommate is difficult. (laughs) There's a reason why um, it's so hard to pair people up who have similar interests, who have similar styles of living, um, and you're just like living with another person. You kind of have to get used to not having a lot of privacy. When I lived abroad, I did have a roommate, and there was no option for a single room at the abroad school unless you had extenuating circumstances. I mean, most of the time it was fine. Living in a dorm was an interesting experience, and then In my junior and senior year, I did become a resident advisor for um, a couple of off-campus apartments and living. So in my senior year, I didn't live on campus. I technically lived off campus, but I was still a part of the college, so I still had to adhere by their rules. And I was a resident advisor for one of them, which meant that my room and board was paid for. So that was nice. But it was also difficult because you had to stay longer to manage checkouts for residents and also do rounds and kind of be on call at certain times when things would go down. I will say I was never a resident advisor for freshmen, which I feel like is the most intensive resident advisor you can get because they're like brand new. I was mostly a resident advisor for um, upperclassmen, which was a tad bit easier to deal with because they kind of knew the drill. But yeah, that was my dorm living experience in college. I ended up being a part of a study abroad program in my junior year, which was right before I ended up graduating. I ended up graduating a semester early because I was able to get all my credits completed for my degree and I didn't have to take a final uh, semester unless I wanted to, which monetarily made sense to finish up my degree earlier. And I ended up taking a a semester to travel abroad to London, which was legitimately the best experience of my entire life. I had traveled before. I'd never traveled out of the country before, but I had traveled with my family to other states. Like I said, New York City was a big part of a dream for me. I really wanted to go to New York City because my family members, my aunt, my grandmother had taken me there before to see Broadway plays, to see the city, to experience it. And it was so fun. I loved New York City. So I had traveled before. I had never traveled out of the country. And I had heard about this kind of like an exchange program, but it was a, it was a semester long study abroad course where I went to a different college, like a sister college for a semester in London. I, I did it. I, I got my passport. I got everything set up, all of my tuition to carry over, my credits to carry over. And going there was just incredible. I ended up, after I left, after I graduated, I ended up being a part of the office that helped me study abroad because I was so passionate about getting kids to study abroad. It was an amazing experience. I cannot emphasize enough how life-changing this experience was. High school was a life-changing experience for me. Studying abroad was a life-changing experience for me. Going to another country, and granted, it was a country where they did speak English. A lot of the the customs were the same. I, I could understand everything. It wasn't like I had to learn a new language, but it was eye-opening to be able to go to a different country and see a different culture and be in the different country. <laughs> like, I, I really don't know how to describe it. I ended up being in London for about five months, um, stayed at Regent's College, which is in Regent's Park, which is this beautiful place. Just, I, I walked around the entire city almost every single day. The way that the classes were set up were really special too, because you didn't, they knew that you were there to travel and they knew that they weren't gonna keep you in the classroom for the whole time. So most of the classes finished like at noon and the rest of the afternoon you could go and explore or even some of the classes wouldn't even happen on Friday. So if you wanted to take a long weekend to go to another place like 
travel to Ireland or Scotland or Spain or Italy, like you could go do that. And it was so easy to do that. We ended up doing that a couple of times. I went to Ireland for a long weekend. I went to Scotland for a long weekend. Ireland, I went to Belfast. Scotland, I went to Glasgow. And I wish I had done more. <laughs> like, it was just so fun. And the, the things I got to do, the things I got to see, the people I got to meet, it was just such a cool, cool experience. Um, and just living in a different country was just brilliant and amazing. I will say the thing that was the most shocking is that nobody wanted to believe that I was from America. Everyone asked me, are you Canadian? Are you Swedish? Right? Like, they, they would never ask me if I was American, like never, which I thought was really interesting. Every, I, I did not have a bad experience in London, like at all. Um, after my semester was over, I did end up traveling to Paris for a week, which was even which was even more incredible. You know, you really don't have a sense of what things are like until you see them in person. I mean, you you see pictures of the Eiffel Tower, right? Like you see pictures of the Arc de Triomphe, you see pictures of Big Ben. But until you're standing in front of it, you're you it's a different experience. Like I, the pictures of the Eiffel Tower are literally just pictures. Going to the Eiffel Tower is an experience. It was amazing. It was really, truly amazing. And I wish I could do it again. I encourage everyone to do that. Every single person. If you are able to travel after high school um, or even during high school when you're a young person, do it. Like, do it. To be able to experience something like that is incredibly important to I think a human's development to have us understand that we are just a small we're just a small part of this world this world is so much more vast than where our neighborhood where we are where we grew up so I think that was the biggest thing for me in college was going to experience that study abroad okay and I do want to talk a little bit about the social aspect of college that I did get to experience. So my freshman year, I did rush a sorority. And I, having done it, I wouldn't recommend it. I don't know what the mentality is of sororities now. Like I really don't know. Um, but back then it was kind of like, you want to be social, you want to have friends, you want to do this. It's, it's really good for your um, career and, and meeting people. And that might be true. It wasn't for me. Um, I rushed a sorority and I was, I probably, I, I'm a nice person. <laughs> I get along well with people. So I really didn't have the problem of like, not getting a bid from a sorority. I had two sororities that did really want to bid for me and I ended up picking one. But the money, you, you have to pay money. <laughs> you have to pay money, which is an added financial burden on top of your already expensive college experience. It's a social thing that you're paying for. There's not a lot else besides that, besides this social aspect. I'm not going to say which sorority I'm a part of because I technically am still a part of it and I don't want to be, I don't want to like get any flack and I'm not trying to be mean towards sororities. But it is still college and there's still young people that are like 18, 19, 20, 21, right? And it's social, which means there's a lot of different personalities. People sometimes are sisters and they hate each other. <laughs> Within the sorority itself can even be very clicky and competitive. Um, and I didn't stay for the freshman. I ended up leaving after my freshman year and then I ended up going back. 
Um, and most, and honestly, a lot of the, the women that I know from the sorority who were friends of mine left. And I don't even know if they ever went back. And I'm still friends with them, you know, like I, I am. But it, I probably would have made friends with them anyway. If I, if, if I hadn't been a part of the sorority, I probably still would have made friends with them. And going back my last semester, I was nominated to be standards chair, which I don't recommend at all, okay? I, I literally tell you not to do it. Standards chair is basically the, the cop of the sorority. <laughs> The standards chair is basically the person who gets you into trouble. And it was awful. And I think I got, I think I was able to get like some discount for being the standards chair. I got like some benefit. It wasn't enough. It was not enough to be the standards chair of the sorority. It just wasn't. Um, I had to call girls in for underage drinking for, you know, misrepresenting the sorority at parties with the fraternity boys, with posting things on Facebook. And it was awful. I, it was awful. I, I, girls, you know, they came in and they cried and I felt so bad and I didn't, I didn't want to get them into trouble. That just was, these are the standards that we have to live by, so, and you broke them. So now we have to put you on probation. And granted, like, I think everybody understood that I was in this position, but it was just, it was just awful. And it just made the experience worse. And it's just, it, it's, it's a whole bunch of social anxiety, <laughs> social, social interaction, negative social interaction that I just felt like was not worth my time or energy, especially in my final semester of college um, and finishing up. I really didn't like it. If you're in a sorority or if you're thinking about going into sorority, I definitely think you should do your research. I think you should talk to people. My experience is a very singular experience. So I do think that there were some positives. I'm not going to say it was all bad, but I, I could have had a good college experience without the, um, without the sorority. I could have done it easily and cheaper. And by the time I was graduating, I did a senior, we did what we call a senior seminar, which is like our final capstone project for the department. And it was so much fun. I, I, I felt like I really did do learning. I, I really did like do the thing I really wanted to do and studied the thing I really wanted to study. And I really, really enjoyed it. And I don't look back on it and be like, man, I wish I had done a business degree. Man, I wish I had, you know, done something where I could make money. I mean, I think everyone will feel like that at some point. But ultimately, I enjoyed the degree that I studied. I enjoyed the time that it took me to study it. I enjoyed the community that I made when I studied it. So um, ultimately, I, I look back and I think how positive that was. Yes, I still have debt that I have to pay off. <laughs> but that just that's literally like, that's just it. You know, that's what college is at this point. Um, should it change? Absolutely. Yes, it should. But will it? Who knows? Um, and right now, I'm just trying to like, get through it. So I don't think it's for everybody. I think you can still have a valuable experience after high school without going to college. I know plenty of people who did not go to college or who took a gap year or who um, did something else. And you can still have a great time. Like you can still do the thing you enjoy doing. You can still make money. You can still live a life, um, a full, valuable life. Don't feel pressured to don't feel pressured to go to college just because you think that's what you have to do. Um, you should go to college because you like to go learn something more outside of high school, which is what I got to do because um, I liked learning. Ultimately, it really is up to you as a an individual um, what you want to do and how you want to spend it, your money and your time. Um, both are extremely valuable things that 
you have to take into account, especially when you leave high school for the first time and you're going to be an adult on your own, making your own decisions. Um, college is a safe place to do that sometimes. Um, you learn a lot about how to manage your time and manage your money and manage your decisions. Um, but you can still do those things without going to college, without spending the tuition. And you can get valuable life, life lessons as well. I hope this helped you kind of think about how you want to approach your life after high school, if that's something you're thinking about right now. And I hope that I, I, I've given you a kind of a good idea of what my experience is. And if you're comparing that to your experience, you know, the ultimate lesson I can tell you is to just do what's right for you. Find people who are invested in your future for you, you know, not for themselves, <laughs> not because they want you to succeed for them, but because they want you to succeed for you. Even if those people are not your parents, if those people are your teachers or your siblings or other friends, find those people who are willing to help you guide yourself to what you want to do. Oh, yeah, the biggest thing, especially after high school, is to just follow your own path and be okay with making mistakes. It's okay. I, I definitely felt like I made mistakes my first year out of high school. And in college, I made plenty of mistakes. But I also got a lot of really cool experiences. I took a lot of really fun classes. And ultimately, I don't regret it. Yes, there is a lot of money that I still have to pay back <laughs> because of those experiences but it was worth it. It was worth it. And I'm, I'm, I have a house. I can eat every day. I know where my next meal is coming from, but do what's right for you financially, mentally, physically, everything. I think ultimately it's, it's independent based on what you want in your life and how you want your life to look. Um, I think that's it for my college experience, but I just wanted to give you a sense of kind of like what my experience was like. And if that helps you at all, make decisions for your future as well. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in class. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Bye.